नीड एनी इंट्रोडक्शन उनके लिए ये कहना कि जब मैं ठान लेता हूं तो अपनी भी नहीं सुनता बिल्कुल सही होगा ही हैज शोन हिज मेटल इन ऑल स्पीयर्स वेयर एवर ही हैज डेबल्ड हिज फिंगर्स इन एज अ फॉर्मर मेंबर ऑफ द एग्जीक्यूटिव काउंसिल ऑफ यूनिवर्सिटी ऑफ दिल्ली ही मेड श्योर दैट द इश्यूज ऑफ ऑल स्टेक होल्डर्स इन द यूनिवर्सिटी वर प्रॉपर्ली टेकन अप एंड एड्रेस्ड टू presently as the member of university court and finance committee he has been raising issues vociferously which are related to each one of us as a teacher and researcher his contribution to the community is immense there are so many facets to his personality that i find myself incapable of narrating he has an energy level unmatched and unparalleled Dr Jail Gupta has the highest number of refresher and orientation call programs which were conducted in the university sir we all bow to your immaculate planning and organization now i request you to kindly take the floor and address the audience thank you professor rekha dayal a very pleasant afternoon to all this gives me immense pleasure to be midst of a galaxy of distinguished guests sitting in this august house on virtual platform mode our chief guest professor k k gawal my elder brother my friend mr professor younger brother professor i am pande professor g soral ca dr sanjeev singhal is also about to join professor principal s p gawal from ramanujan college faculty members participants from different parts of the country and members of the organizing team i welcome you all to this valedictory function of two weeks refresher course on research methodology and data analysis this is a program organized by the teaching learning center in association with the indian accounting association ncr chapter research methodology is the mechanism to solve a research problem in a planned way data analysis is the process of systematically applying relevant statistical tools to describe illustrate condense and evaluate data research and data analysis are very significant for all professionals to develop decision making process in the modern era the objective of the study the objective of the program the present refresher course has been designed to cater to the needs of academia researchers and industry professionals for a sound understanding of research design and use of related softwares for data analysis the course is formulated to disseminate knowledge or some of the or some of the important digital tools used for academic purposes the course has also helped the participants in writing research paper for a good quality journals the online refresher course is diligently planned around developing the foundation knowledge required to enhance the scope of the research the program is has been an attempt towards exploring different dimensions and paradigms of the research coming to the large number of topics we have covered now some of the topics include an introduction to research research and data types research process hypothesis testing types of constraints various measurements and data analysis framing of research questions and research objectives data entry data cleaning and data handling questionnaire designing statistical and regression analysis issuing in spss uni variable analysis and biovariate analysis and many others the resource persons number of eminent persons were invited in imparting education in the various topic on the various topics some of the notable resource persons include professor cp gupta a well known researcher former head and dean faculty of applied science south campus professor neeraj kaushik department of business administration national institute of technology kuchetra and many others 
finally, the organizing team of the present refresher course had put its concerted efforts to mark this program meaningful, to make this program meaningful and useful in the academic mm -hmm. growth of the participants. This program will help in the promotion of the participants through the increased API score as per the UGC norms. It is also important to mention that every course organized under the auspices of Teaching Learning Center of Ramanujan College is strictly managed in pursuance to the regulations of UGC and Ministry of Education. This program fulfills all the conditions of regulatory bodies. I wish all the participants a big success and they should go with enhanced knowledge about the latest developments in the research area to impart to their students. Thank you very much. Jai Hind. Thank you, Rekha. Thank you, sir. Thank you for taking us through the journey of the refresher course and also with your welcome address. We all are very fortunate to have with us our chief guest, Professor K.K. Agarwal, Chairman, National Board of Accreditation and former founder, Vice Chancellor of Shri Guru Govind Singh in the Prest University. We are equally fortunate to have the keynote speaker, Professor I.M. Pandey, honorary distinguished Professor I.M. Jammu, former Vice President and Dean, School of Management, Asian Institute of Technology, Thailand. And also he was the former Dean of I.M. Ahmedabad, having worked as Professor and Dean, Faculty of Commerce and Business Studies, University of Delhi. Thank you, sir, for joining us. We show our gratitude to Professor G. Sorel, who's our coordinator for the National Accounting Talent Search and Head Department of Accountancy and Statistics, Monlal Sikharia University, Udaipur. He's also the past president, Indian Accounting Association. We are equally grateful for the presence of CA Dr. Sanjeev Singhal, President, I, Indian Accounting Association, NCI chapter and member, Central Council. I would now like to request our main uh, uh, motivating force, Professor S.P. Agarwal, Principal Ramanujan College, who will be giving us a little background and insight of the course. Professor Agarwal, as an alum of University of Delhi, has his graduation and post-graduation from here and his PhD from United States of America. He has been the chief architect of the makeover of Ramanujan College that was previously known as Desh Bandhu Evening College. Today, Raman and Ramanujan College has secured its coveted position as one of the best 10 colleges with an A double plus and 3.75 grade points. The change is evident and reflected in every corner of the college, be it the placement of students, research work of teachers, or the exemplary work done by non-teaching staff. One can see the magic touch of determination, dedication, and devotion of Professor Agrawal. I call upon sir, who is our ever smiling, cool, yet very determined and pragmatic leader to give us an overview. Thank you. Thank you, Rekhaji, for, as always, for all the nice words. Uh, good evening and uh, welcome to each and everyone present in this uh, valedictory function of two-week course on research methodology and data analysis. Uh, our chief guest, none other than great Professor K.K. Agarwal, our keynote speaker, our guru mentor, Professor I.M. Pandey, Guest of Honor, Professor G. Sorel, uh, our own young man, Dr. Sanjeev Singhal, uh, my guru and mentor again, Dr. J. L. Gupta, Rekha Ji, Anjali, and other colleagues who are part of this program, and all the learned participants. Once again, welcome on behalf of Teaching Learning Center, Ramanujan College, University of Delhi, Friends, uh, as in the opening remark, when, when this, we started this program, I said that uh, the program will be of uh, a good quality and you will learn out of the program. Uh, I'm sure the kind of people who have talked to you or given lecture or uh, videos, you must have learned the tricks of uh, your research, uh, which we will hear very shortly from you. But uh, another important thing is that uh, through these programs, not only uh, enhance your capability, research capability, but also 
your communication and personality development skills. We cannot make you uh, a perfect researcher in two weeks, but of course, learning by doing is very important. If you keep on practicing, if you keep on doing certain things, if you keep on interacting with the experts, probably things will be much, much better. Another important thing I always say that, uh, uh, you know, all your suggestions which we get through your feedback, we try to incorporate in our future programs. That is why we could reach uh, to more than two lakh participants over the country. And let me tell you, wherever I go, whether it's a college or a university, there you will find some participants from this institution. So that's a matter of pride, but also we need to maintain the quality. That is very important because over the period, uh, you know, if we deteriorate, things will not move. And uh, you will also be glad to know that, uh, you know, this is the only center where whichever program we launch, we always uh, have more than 200 participants. On the other hand, there are several centers, they always crave that we do not get even five, 10 participants. So this is again, a uh, you know, the reputation and, and the creativity and the quality of our programs or the, uh, 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 you know, efforts of our team. Now, uh, friends, as regards research and data analysis, I would briefly say two, three things. Uh, otherwise, we will hear from the experts. See, basically, the research should not only be for publication or for thesis. My viewpoint is research should be for solving the problems of the society. That is a key. You must get an idea to resolve certain issues because country is facing a lot of small, small issues even uh, whether it is urban uh, area development or whether it is uh, environment development, whether it is, uh, you know, improving the quality of the people or uh, creating the startups or, uh, you know, entrepreneurship, all these issues, you know, as a, as a teacher, as a, as a faculty member, it is our responsibility to train our students. So our research should be focused to our students and that should be used in the classroom. That is very important. So my, my, my humble submission to each one of you is think out of the box for doing research, whether it is a PhD research, whether it is a writing the research papers mm -hmm. in the quality yeah. journal. Another important thing is that, you know, uh, I have been interacting with a lot of entrepreneurs who are doing, uh, you know, quality things. The other day, uh, I was interacting with someone who said that his mission is to change the complete farming structure of this country. He wants to, uh, uh, you know, change from chemical farming or fertilizer based farming to organic farming. He said, of course, time will, uh, you know, it, it will take time. The important thing is that his, his uh, ambition is that yield should not come down because if yield is coming down, then farmer will not adopt it. So, uh, you know, he said four or five things and he said, you know, I have done it in 50 acres or 100 acres or 500 acres. Then, you know, I had a person who had already had a 500 acre land. He said, yes, I would like to uh, practice it in, in my fields. So why I'm relating this, that these kind of issues you must think of. And because practical application of the research is the key, not theoretical because that is not required at all. So uh, again, you know, uh, with this little knowledge which we are providing, you must be able to take it further for doing the quality research, for doing, for solving certain problems of this country, and also ensure that this should reach to your students who can either use to innovate or can use through uh, you know, uh, through uh, startups or, or or something else. You know, every institution nowadays, you all know that has institutional innovation council. Now, what for this council is? This is for getting the new ideas. This is for new startups. You know, we started it last year and uh, you will be glad to know that uh, we have developed at least 10 small, small startups of the students who are young students of 20 years or 21 years. You know, uh, I do not have that kind of time. Otherwise, I can relate to you. But with this, once again, uh, you know, uh, I welcome you to this validatory function. And, and uh, 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 you know, I would advise, rather, I would request that you should think out the box 
and apply this knowledge uh, in your day-to-day -day research, in innovation, or in startup, or in uh, you know classroom setup. Thank you very much. Over to uh, Rekha ji. Thank you so much, sir. Our chief guest, Professor K. K. Agarwal, sir, though he is busy with another selection committee, but had graciously accepted and acceded to our fervent appeal to be with us. We acknowledge in all humility and express our gratitude to him for taking some time out for us. Before I call Professor K. K. Agarwal to give his address, I would like to inform uh, the audience Professor K.K. Agarwal is the chairman of National Board Accreditation. He's the founder, vice chancellor of Guru Gobind Singh in the Press University, Delhi. And he was the vice chancellor for 10 years. Professor K.K. Agarwal obtained his Bachelor of Engineering degree from Punjab University and Master's degree from NIT Kurukshetra. He did his also PhD from NIT Kurukshetra. After a distinguished service of 27 years at NIT, then he joined Hisar for a period of three years and then as a vice chancellor of Guru Gobind Singh University. He has been president of the Institution of Electronics and Telecommunication Engineers. He was also the president of Computer Society of India and president of Southeast Asia Regional Computer Confederation. Professor Agrawal has published more than 400 papers in very reputed journals. Out of them, a large number are in the international journals. He has been widely consulted by the industry and his contribution towards the reliability analysis for PSLV has been a tremendous contribution to the society. Professor Agarwal was conferred the honorary fellowship by Broadcast Society of India and was decorated with Lifetime Achievement Award by IETE and also by the Computer Society. He has been presently associated with National Board of Accreditation in various capacities. We are extremely grateful to you, sir, for taking time out with us and would request you to please give your address. Uh, thank you, Dr. Rekha Dayal, for a nice introduction. Uh, before I start, I'll just like to make a correction. My term as Chairman National Board of Accreditation has been over a few months ago. So let that be known. Uh, yes, friends, uh, it has always been a pleasure to be a part of uh, any function organized by this group. Uh, Rekha ji referred to Dr. Jail Gupta. I think I am here today on one of those uh, pretexts. I am in Indore on a selection committee meeting. He called me. He said, come what may, 10 minutes ke liye aye, aapko aana hi hoga. So that's, uh, that brings me here, Dr. Gupta. Thank you very much. Uh, Professor Pandey, Professor Saral, uh, CA Dr. Sanjeev Sangil, Dr. Ekha Dyal, Professor S.P. Agarwal, Dr. Anjali Gupta, Dr. J.L. Gupta, and all the distinguished uh, participants of this faculty development program. Uh, whenever Dr. S.P. Agarwal organizes a program, it's a pleasure to find some uh, data which is different than the whole country. I mean, I fully well agree that getting 200 plus participants for an FDP is probably a unique thing and getting it consistently for uh, hundreds of programs uh, makes it much more unique. So I will like to congratulate uh, uh, Professor S.P. Agarwal, who is, of course, always blessed by Dr. Gupta and uh, uh, Professor Pandey and uh, friends like that to make it happen, but he does it. Friends, uh, the topic which you have uh, chosen for this FDP, Research Methodology and Data Analysis, uh, I'm just... Uh, taking something from the my address on 15th July. This 15th July, I was chief guest at CSIR's uh, 4 PI Institute in Bangalore. Uh, this institution was established about 35 years ago and is the institution dedicated to data science only. And uh, 
I when I was delivering my chief guest address on the foundation day of the institution, I did say, look at this country, and we still feel we are lagging. 35 years ago, to think of an institution fully dedicated to data science has been a vision of this country. This country has had great visions, but somehow we have rarely taken advantage of uh, the potential of these institutions to its fullest extent. When I was talking there, uh, it happened to be Shivratri. And I said, two eyes for Shiva are for data capturing and third eye is for data analysis. And uh, because what Lord Shiva does, he sees the true eyes all the time. And whenever he feels analysis has come to an outcome, he uses his third eye to deliver that outcome, positive yeah. or negative. So it's not that uh, no, 35 not years is a short time, but probably much before data science was there in some form or the other. But it was a dormant subject like many other subjects. Okay, Artificial yeah. intelligence is another subject which was very active, then became dormant for 30 years or so, but now again very active. So when you organize a course on data analysis, uh, kindly friends make sure that Today's technologies, whether it's artificial intelligence or data analysis or Internet of Things, have a very beautiful companionship. These technologies work together. Artificial intelligence has become important all over again because data science tools are there. Earlier, what was happening was a lot of data was being collected, but the data was uh, being collected like a... Um, rubbish uh, heap, you know, we see in Delhi many times mounds of uh, rubbish. If you collect data like that, it's of no use. Unless you are able to analyze the data, uh, call out the useful information, and you have the tools for that, uh, whether it's natural intelligence or artificial intelligence, nothing will be able to use the data. Somebody rightly said, uh, the people in the world who take the most important decisions unfortunately, have the least amount of time to take those decisions. And therefore, if data science can collect all the data, analyze it, and give them the relevant information, the decisions in the world will be much more correct than uh, we have been taking by uh, without knowing the data. Therefore, data analysis is something so very important that uh, one has to really appreciate. Uh, uh, Professor S.P. Agarwal and team has really called it uh, interdisciplinary course. I can't agree less than that, less because data analysis has to be interdisciplinary. You have to collect data from everything and use it for everything. As a matter of fact, the name of the game would be that the collecting data from one domain and leading it to knowledge, which could be useful to another domain. And that is with the real potential of uh, uh, data science. Now, whether you call it by the name of uh, experience, whether you call it by the name of emotional caution, whether you call it by the name of common sense, whether you call it gut feel, whether you call it sixth sense, according to me, all this is data analysis happening subconsciously, not with formal tools. Uh, sometimes we say, he is, uh, X is so intelligent, he comes up with an answer. Now, that's, there's some sort of data analysis algorithm is running in his brain, which is not known. And uh, I, for one, like many of you, believe that we have still learned only maybe 1% of the nature, which God has bestowed upon us, and 99% is yet to be done. Data analysis also happens to be one of those things. The algorithms which God has bestowed upon us have yet to be covered. Uh, uncovered much more, and some of them we are trying to do. And I once again congratulate uh, uh, Professor S.P. Agarwal and the team for doing excellent courses all the time. I always deem it a pleasure to be a part of it for uh, a couple of reasons. Number one, quality is never compromised, and I'm sure of that. Number two, outreach is maximum, and that's a happy thing. Number three, it's always interdisciplinary. First of all, they always do it together. 
with the CS society and all that. I mean, bringing mathematics and accounting on one platform itself is quite interdisciplinary, particularly in this country. I've, I've seen uh, uh, people don't see any threat on that. So therefore, uh, uh, to be a part of their program is always great. I have only few small observations once I have the opportunity to talk. Generation of data today has become beyond anybody's control. Anybody who speaks anything, pictures anything, has become a data, whether you know it or not, by and large. And that amount of data which we are generating is terrifically large. Now, we many a times do not realize the cost of it because much of it appears free. WhatsApp is free. And therefore, we do not mind sending that good morning to 1,000 people. It's a good thing. But how much bandwidth we are using, how much power we are consuming, we only look at the power of our mobile phone. We don't look at the power of the data centers, which are eating away so much of the power. A paper from Europe says that if data generation continues to rise at the same pace after 30 years, Europe will have power for nothing else except computers. Now, are we looking for a Europe like that? Or are we looking for a world like that, where computers will exist and power will be not there for anything else? Certainly not. So one will have to keep in mind how much data analysis. I have seen mailboxes sending mails to dead people also after uh, 10 years. Because your mail ID is there, so mail will keep on going even if you, after your death for 10 years. Now, unless I said in that uh, keynote address, I, I think a time has come, we will have to stamp the data as to when should this data be deleted, like the expiry date of the data. Because otherwise, we'll be collecting much more data and much of it may not be meaningful at times. I give an example many a times when I take the morning walk, and my mobile phone application tells me, uh, you have walked 2.5 kilometers, so many steps. Okay, it makes sense. But then it tells me, first minute you walk so much, second minute you walk so much. What the hell this data is adding value to it? Except if the doctor wants to this data or something. So we are, by subconscious habit, because we don't have to spend, we are generating data many a times, much more, than what is making meaning to us. And therefore, some sort of holistic data analysis will have to be done by the devices itself so that data is not unduly large. Otherwise, we are consuming power, which many of us do not realize. I read again a paper that 60 short mails of one sentence each consume the same power which you need to drive one kilometer of car. Now, you will never drive one kilometer of car uselessly, but you won't mind sending mails uselessly, even if it comes to it. So somebody has to be power conscious. Bandwidth is costly. Somebody will have to be bandwidth conscious. Uh, Professor S.P. Agarwal is a specialist of statistics. And uh, data analysis as a logical connection with statistics. So therefore, this course must have been much better than even the earlier courses because of its own brain. And friends, uh, I feel in this country, we have to concentrate our applications of data analysis to education, to manufacturing, to agriculture, and to health sciences. These are the necessities of this country. And the data analysis will be important. Today, we have robotic surgeries being performed from USA to India and vice versa. All that is good. But then uh, what are the applications for our agriculture? Uh, where uh, uh, the example was just given uh, by Professor S.P. Agarwal itself for agriculture. Data analysis is the most viable application for data for agriculture in this country. And we have still done precious little on that field. We have done, but it's precious little. So I think uh, once the participants of a course like this become beneficiaries and researchers, uh, I would uh, urge them and request them to use these sciences, to use this knowledge 
because if we don't use it, then uh, like any other commodity, just as you have law of diminishing returns in economics, you will have law of diminishing returns in data analysis also. You, so therefore, uh, what to do, where to stop, how much to do, I think all that will be a part of the uh, very active research. I'm very sure that this two weeks program must have gone very well and the participants are not only learned, they must be richer. My only request to my teacher colleagues who were participants who were, uh, please apply all what you have learned in your small ways uh, as quickly as you can. You do not require much resources. Today, online resources are available, many of them free of cost. You just have the will to do research and you will really uh, give the organizers of this course a great satisfaction that their effort in imparting knowledge to you has not gone waste. Uh, with these few words, I once again thank the organizers for giving me uh, an opportunity to be a part of the great effort. And uh, I thank you, the, the organizers, and I wish all the participants a great utility of this knowledge. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. We are indebted to you Thanks. for your participation Thanks. over a short period of short notice. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Ma'am, please unmute, ma'am. Thank Sorry, you so Anjali. Much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Professor Agrawal, sir, for accepting our request and also opening our eyes to this huge, humongous problem that we are confronted with in terms of data analysis and how we are also adding to the menace of creating so much of data. I think it's an eye opener for each one of us. Thank you so much, sir, for being with us and spending our, your time with us. No program can improve unless we take the feedback and the inputs from those who are pursuing the course. It is difficult in a short span of time to accommodate many students, but I would ask Ms. Saloni and Professor Anjali Gupta to kindly take over from here and guide us through this path and invite the feedback from participants, a few of them briefly, because our uh, other speakers, keynote speaker and Professor Ayan Pandey, sir, and Professor Soril, they are both speaking, and Professor Dr. Sanjeev. Thank you so much, Salon. Thank you so much, ma'am. We at TLC Ramanujan College and Indian Accounting Association NCR chapter are of the view that by mentoring teachers, we can enhance growth and development of the students. The learning process is continuous. And I'm using this uh, platform to express my appreciation for all the participants who have come forward to share their experiences about the course. And definitely I'm thankful to them for accepting our request. First, I would like to request Dr. Rashmi from Atmaram Sanatan Dharm College, University of Delhi, uh, who is an assistant professor in the Department of Economics to share her views. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you for giving me this opportunity. Good, good evening, honorable principal, sir, Dr. S.P. Agarwal, <coughs> Dr. J.L. Gupta, sir, honorable J.L. Gupta, sir, Dr. K.K. Agarwal, Dr. Rekha, ma'am, Professor Rekha, ma'am. Uh, good evening, all the participants. Yeah. Uh, I will, uh, uh, today I will share my experience as I am teaching in uh, Department of Economics in ARST College. I have done my PhD in 2002 itself and have teaching experience of 20 years in the year. Well, uh, first of all, let me congratulate all the organizing team, Professor Ali Gupta, Saloni, Dr. Rajiv, uh, and uh, Nayan. It, is, it was really an admirable job to teach us at this stage in very smooth manner by well-known resource person like Professor Neeraj Kaushik, Dr. Nikhil Rajput, uh, Dr. C.S. Gupta, Dr. Jaspreet Kaur on qualitative analysis and quantitative analysis. <clears throat> they have started with very basic how to write uh, re uh, research 
on uh, hypothesis, introduction part, and uh, literature review, uh, how to use Nevo RN software uses. Uh, Professor Anjali and uh, Monica, uh, that was even study method, he was very new for me and a very nice manner uh, they have uh, taught us and give uh, practical exposure in all part of uh, structural equation modeling by HK Dangi, <laughs> ANOVA analysis, variance, SPSS package, and uh, latex software. So it was so interesting for me because I was trying these software to learn uh, a, a very long time, but uh, I got opportunity for innovative project in Delhi University, UNESCO, ICSSR. But I think I was so uh, outdated. So I'm really thankful uh, to you all. And uh, uh, this two weeks refresher course, uh, faculty development program is really uh, enriching myself, empowering my uh, knowledge and upgrading my knowledge in skill about computer language, different research techniques and different types of research also. And how to publish paper in high impact, uh, paper, uh, high factor and scooper. It is like, just like giving overall uh, with a full uh, package of research and data analysis. It was really a wonderful experience. And uh, for new, uh, like me, is also very smooth learning. And they were teaching the practical so uh, slow and uh, it was given video recording also. So we were trying and it was done. So it, uh, it, uh, uh, it's really need to work on it. Uh, to have complete knowledge. So it's like, for me, it is like adding a new feather in my uh, cap. <laughs> so I'm Thank empowered you. and equipped as a better teacher. And I will teach these techniques to students for innovative project. And I will take uh, new projects also and apply these techniques. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm really uh, feeling so happy for enriching by enriched by this training program thank you rekha ma'am thank you everyone for giving this opportunity thank you so much thank you so much rashmi ma'am i think uh, by your words we can see that we have fulfilled what is being uh, taught to us by our mentors that uh, how the program should be delivered. Thank next, you. Uh, next, may I ask uh, Dr. Pradeep Kumar Das, Assistant Professor from Dhamdana uh, Anchalik College, Assam. Sir, uh, may I request you to please share your views? Pradeep, sir. Uh, Ma'am, <clears throat> good evening to all of you, all of renowned person present in the Myself, Mr. Bodhikumar Das, Assistant Professor, Department of Economics of Thamdhama Anjali College. I am from Assam. I am very grateful to the Ramanujan College for giving the opportunity, for giving me the opportunity to participate in the two-week interdisciplinary refresher course. I have uh, got too much knowledge uh, from both live and recorded session. The topics delivered by the renowned and eminent resource persons are highly interactive, highly informative, and it enlightens me, enlightens me to a great extent. So I am very glad to uh, I am very glad to have got knowledgeable uh, research person from such such you know, persons. So I have got uh, NVivo, Orange software and uh, SPCS, uh, how to use the data analysis through so SPCS software. So various knowledge, hypothesis testing, and how to uh, uh, how to study literature review, and how the uh, how can I publish my research paper in uh, impact factor journals uh, under Scopus or Web of Science and EGC Carelist State. 
uh, journals. So lots of knowledge I have gathered from this interdisciplinary uh, represented course. So thank you. I am very satisfied uh, from this program, from this represented course. So thank you once again to the Ramadan College. And uh, thank you once again, ma'am. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much, Pradeep, sir. Listening to such nice words all the way from Assam makes our day, sir. Thank you so much. Now, may I request uh, Dr. Pooja Thakur, uh, Assistant Professor in Gargi College, to please share her views. Dr. Pooja? Yeah. Huh. Ma'am, can I, I please can request see. you be to just be brief because... Uh, yeah, yeah. Thank sure, you so sure. much. Thank you so yeah. much. Uh, good evening, everyone. Um, thank you for giving me this opportunity to speak on this occasion where we have so many eminent people present on the, um, on the occasion. Uh, just two small, uh, this thing, I'm from history background. So just a suggestion for future, you know, we as such, we are very afraid of maths. So, you know, and data and things like that. So, you know, just a brief suggestion that, you know, maybe next time when we have, uh, you know, when we hear words like quantitative analysis, you know, regression analysis and all that, you know, it psychs it out uh, anyways. So next, maybe, you know, when we have a session like this, maybe just a brief while people who would like to have, you know, like mean, median, mode, we have done math some at some point of time, but just a brief um, introduction to these terms would make us feel more comfortable. Uh, yeah, but thank you so much for uh, giving me this opportunity. It was a wonderful session. I really, I really enjoyed and learned a lot, especially Neeraj Kumar sir's uh, uh, thing, you know, session was very, very useful. I would like to just uh, say that. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you so much, Pooja. Uh, Ma'am, we'll just really keep this thing in mind that definitely for some participants, we have to really start from the scratch a very short time on the revision of those aspects. We'll keep it in mind. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, may I request uh, Dr. Manpreet Kaur from Department of Mathematics, University of Delhi to please share her views. Manpreet, ma'am. Yeah, uh, good evening, everyone. Myself, Manpreet from Gandhi College. Well, uh, I find this FDP very informative. All these sessions were very enlightening and well explained, and they are really useful for the research purpose, whether it is a research uh, for the research work for, you know, uh, uh, for some research papers, or we want to conduct any, you know, research projects in the college. So all these things are going to help us a lot. Thank you to the organizers for conducting such useful FDPs and giving me this opportunity. Thank you. Thank you so much, Manpreet, ma'am. Uh, may I request just see uh, that is Dr. Manoj Kumar Tripathi, Faculty of Arts and Social Sciences, Swami Vivekanand Subhate University, Merit. Sir, if you are present, sir. Okay. I think uh, sir is not able to join due to some reason because he was already saying that uh, I may have some network problem. But yes, uh, he has sent us his warm regards and uh, gratitude for being a part of the course. And uh, definitely, uh, I just can share this much that uh, many more pa participants were uh, willing to join, but due to network issue or something, or they were traveling in between, uh, we could not hear their views. So with this, ma'am, over to you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Professor Anjali Gupta. I think uh, uh, these uh, the feedback is is a very very important part of any program because that that gives us a chance to improve ourselves for future assignments. A keynote speaker for today is none other than Professor Ayan Pandey. Each time we talk of or we hear of finance, accounting, capital markets, strategic finance, the only image that conjures up in our mind is that of Professor Ayan Pandey. An erudite scholar, a researcher of great repute, an experienced teacher, a consultant in the field of finance and strategy. He's an author of several books on financial management, which are being used for both postgraduate courses as well as graduate uh, studies, not only in our country, but in other countries also. Presently, Professor Pandey is an honorary distinguished professor of finance and accounting, IIM, Jammu. His research specialization include corporate finance, venture capital, emerging markets, governance and strategic finance. He has published more than 60 articles in reputed international journals, 
and has many management cases to his credit. He has served on the board of directors of HPCL India, Kuchin Shipyard India, IFCI, IDBI, Principal, and Indorama Thailand. Professor Ayam Pandey is a PhD in finance from the University of Delhi. He held the position of Director General at Delhi School of Business and Vivekananda Institute of Professional Studies. Earlier, he was a professor at Indian Institute of Management, Ahmedabad, for more than 25 years, where he also served as Acting Director, Dean and Chairman of Doctoral Program and Chairman of Finance and Accounting Area. He also served in the Indian Institute of Management, Lucknow, as Professor of Research. He has held the position of Dean and Chair, Professor, School of Management and Vice President for Academic Affairs, Asian Institute of Technology, Thailand. Before joining AIT, in the beginning, he served as a Dean of Faculty of Commerce and Business in Delhi University, as well as a Senior Professor at the Department of Financial Studies. Professor Ayam Pandey has taught at many international universities in United States of America, France, UK, Malaysia, Vietnam, Sri Lanka, Bangladesh, to name a few. His areas of research, as I said earlier, include a very large uh, uh, segment of strategic corporate finance, corporate governance, venture capital, emerging capital markets. We are extremely grateful to you, sir, for sparing your valuable time in being with us and being our keynote speaker. I would request you now to take the floor and address the audience. Professor Ayan Pandey. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Vilka Dayal. Thanks for this uh, uh, not needed kind of uh, introduction because uh, I know all of you, <laughs> you know me. So uh, first of all, I think I would like to uh, thank you organizers of this program. I know that Dr. S. P. Agarwal, Dr. J. L. Gupta, and you people have been organizing these kinds of programs for uh, programs like this for 200 participants. I think uh, that's a creditable action on your part because it is very difficult to get participants. And if the people are interested, which means that these programs must be very useful, they must be finding them very useful. I would like to uh, talk about a few things. Uh, in the beginning, uh, Dr. S. P. Agarwal was mentioning that the research which is being conducted by teachers, it should be useful to the society. Um, I would like to put it this way that, look, when I am appointed a teacher in a particular college or university, there are uh, certain kinds of duties which I am required to perform. I think the most important out of all of them is, in I am Andhavad, for example, we were told that, look, your duties include your teaching, research, and academic administration, then consulting, four of them actually. It being the management institute and consulting became an important part of your activity because consulting, you learn a lot from the uh, practicing world. And of course, you earn money too. Now, you have to be an excellent teacher. So there is no choice if you join a particular college. Research, of course, in IIM Ahmedabad, we used to debate the, that what is research? What kind of research should be done, for example? The first former director of IIM Ahmedabad, John, uh, that was uh, Professor Ravi Mathai, and he said that he wrote a white paper and he mentioned that, look, if your research is not useful to anyone, either it should be academically useful or it should be useful for the practicing world. If it's not that, he said that I don't care for who cites and doesn't cite your paper. But if somebody finds it useful, you have done your job. But slowly and gradually, actually, when these uh, uh, evaluating, uh, uh, let's say, a kind of institutions come up and they were in private sector and the public sector in India, for example, we have accreditation um, agencies now. And the moment you started accrediting these institutions, then I think the focus shifted and a lot of emphasis was being uh, given to the research. Now, 
uh, in IIM Ahmedabad, we used to discuss, and we had excellent teachers actually. Even as a student in Sri Ram College of Commerce, I remember some of my teachers actually, and whatever they taught to us, I have not forgotten even those. So, well, they were PhD, but none of them did good research, so called good research in those days, but they were excellent teachers. So, this debate will be always there that whether we need good teachers or good researchers, or can we have two types of faculty members, those who are good teachers and let them concentrate. When we say good teachers, actually, it means that you are continuously innovating in the teaching methods and the material which you are imparting to the students, actually. Now here, some of us thought that, look, if you want to do that, then research becomes important because it is research which will enrich your teaching quality. And at the same time, perhaps it is research which will um, force you to innovate in your teaching methods. Now, what I find in universities, when I go to the colleges of Delhi University, for example, even my own alma mater, what I find is that there are teachers who have been teaching one single course for 25 years, 30 years, and some of them have not even changed their notes actually when they are there in the class. The examinations uh, have become, uh, I think, uh, uh, the, it's examination oriented rather than the learning oriented. Now, your center, for example, is called teaching and learning, which means the teachers are learning and therefore the quality of uh, teaching is improving. And examination oriented, what is happening is today you go to a top college in, let's say, Delhi University, you won't find third year students in the class, maybe just 20% or 25% of them. It's a hard reality actually, because all of them are busy in preparing a lot of things actually. The CA, sometimes MBAs, the CAT, and all kinds of examinations they are preparing. Why? Because they know that even if they pick up last five years question papers and you prepare those, you can get good marks, you can get good grades if you have a great system. So I think we need to look into this. Now, research, because it has been made compulsory, and therefore, the, it may, I'm, that is, I, I'm suspecting that the quality may be compromised, actually. And then when you have thousands of journals which, are, which have been approved by UGC, and there are, let's say that you have ABC category of journals, A category, B category, you have times, let's say that uh, there is a ranking, and uh, of course, when we say A category, even A category is uh, diluting now, okay? And then B category is, of course, a lot of C type of journals have been there. Now, then people have been claiming that because this is a scopus journal, therefore, it's a good job. It's a good article. I'm not very sure about that, of course. It may be, may not be, but because I have read many of those, I've been reviewing a lot of articles and not that uh, I intend to, let's say, reject them, but most of them get rejected. Now, let me share my, therefore, one, this debate has to take place in the college is that if the I'm teachers are, if the teachers are doing research, is that getting converted into good teaching or not? I think the principals or the head of the departments they perhaps need to look into these kinds of things. My experience working with uh, my PhD students in different institutions, because I have worked in different institutions, so I have many PhD students. Now, uh, many of them come up uh, with, when I was in Delhi, um, uh, let's say Delhi University towards the fag end of my career, uh, three years I spent here. Of course, I started from Sri Ram College of Commerce, but then I disappeared for almost 30. 30 years or 35 years, came back. And um, so the number of students will come to me and they will say, sir, I would like to do a research. I said that, do you have an idea of a topic? Uh, no. Yeah, okay, fine, no problem. Do you have an idea of a broad area in which you would like to find out a topic? The answer would be no. Do you know that if you have an area, let's say that if you say, I want to work in uh, capital markets within finance, for example, then do you know that what kind of seminal papers have been written in that particular area? Can you identify, can you tell me a few of them? Now, what are those universities which are doing these kinds of research? So if you ask these kinds of questions and then we find that uh, 
a number of them will not be able to answer these questions. You see, I remember many incidents, but then I won't dwell it here. The students doing MPhil and never having read the original papers, even if you provide them and you want to discuss those papers. So I'm just giving a, that side, uh, the, 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 a different picture to you, just to think of improving the quality of research actually. Now, uh, when we were doing our research, we didn't have data. Now, Professor Agarwal very well mentioned the importance of data. They have become very, very big actually. We were talking about GBs and now we were saying terabytes. Now what we are talking is yottabytes actually, very, very large. Of course, he mentioned that we will have a problem of power. That is true. We will have a problem of power. But then there is data now. Now, in our times, we didn't have database actually. You have, even for the accounting and finance people, let's say to begin with, progress is there and you can access the data of the companies. You can access over several years, in fact, on several variables. In our times, we didn't have that opportunity, in fact. And what we were doing that we were spending a lot of time in collecting data itself. Survey methods, of course, you do have to collect data even today. But let's say that if I want to work on the secondary data then we were collecting, I remember that our teacher, Dr. Elsie Gupta, well, who is so well known, uh, unfortunately has died now, and in the finance research, actually, he himself used to collect the data. See, he had some research associates with him, but then they were collecting data. And then you will put that to analysis. So data availability has become very easy. So your job has been solved to that extent. Now, analyzing it, we are using computers. In our time, we didn't have these personal computers. We have Fortran 4, Delhi Computer Center. We had Fortran 2 in Delhi School of Economics. That Fortran 2, you were to operate yourself, which we didn't know. We thought it's a box, and we don't understand how to use it. So we were trained a little bit in the language of computer, which we understood a little bit, not much. But then we thought we will use the computer centers. Uh, and what we will do is we will go with our data. And then we will tell that, look, can you put this data in systematic way so that we can use uh, econometric techniques uh, to analyze the data. So we were, we were told that you have to punch the cards. So we have that system those days. We were punching cards. So when, when we were spending our time, we were spending our time in data collection in punching cards. In spite of that, our guides told us that these are papers which you have to read and discuss with B, for example. Those were the original papers, actually, the seminal papers in the area of research. Now, the, now things have become very easy. Now, if you look at, if you say that Scopus database, EPSCO, for example, then Science Direct, these are top database where a lot of articles, with real good top articles are published in some like science direct for example now you have now software where you can ask for a bibliography actually of course and there are techniques that how do you sort out those those uh, articles which are there. if you give document if you say i am working on let's say capital structure of course you can write more words to get more articles there or capital budgeting in finance for example so what you can do is that you can, uh, let's say, put it together, all right? And, and systematically. So bibliometric analysis is possible. And if you use that software, I think your, uh, this, uh, the, the, the finding out the articles, and then you can even, what you can do is that you can put that in, in systematic way. Now, actually the citations are being emphasized these days. You can sort out your articles which you want to read for your research topic by the number of citations. Okay, higher the number of citations, the assumption is that it must be a good article and which will guide you, which will help you in, in understanding your own uh, topic. So you can do that. Now, the literature analysis also have to be very, very systematic actually, okay? So it has to be done scientifically in a systematic manner not have as a, what I found with number of my students is that even if I say, look, these 30 articles are must for you to read, what they will come. And then I said that you analyze them and, and come with maybe two pages and write on those. What were they doing? They were mostly 
writing from the abstract of the article without even going through the article central so this is the this was the kind of setup maybe things have changed now i don't know if the quality has improved i have no idea because now i don't interact with with phd students so much as i used to do earlier but the teacher the students who are teacher who are my students and teachers now they give me the same impression that quality is still still a problem i've been going for selection committees meetings and in iim sector and system and um, while well, very recently i was in one of the iims and then a teacher who was to be promoted from assistant to associate is already a phd but hardly any papers of course but even i said look you have to be a good teacher and his um, rating was 5 by 5 that was his rating but when we just started discussing the basic questions i think unfortunately he failed to answer the clarity of concepts was not there well but still he has been teaching and is considered one of the best teachers there so these are problems practical problems so what i'm saying is that things have become much easier for you therefore you have to concentrate in reading the literature and one you do research review you have to give your opinion what they do is that these are uh, different kinds of thing you do research uh, review and it has no connection with your data collection and data analysis why so there has to be a connection simply saying that look now i am using this particular industry if there have been thousands of uh, research papers on the same topic and if there is nothing new in your why it should be accepted but somehow they are being accepted they are being published even the research phd's are given on those kinds of areas so i'm just because i i feel these uh, kind of things therefore i'm sharing with these young people some of them are young some of them have uh, the participant i'm talking about some of you have 30 years experience 20 years experience you have been sometimes out of uh, let's say touch as far as research is concerned because it was not emphasized earlier so uh, these are some of the concerns of course you said that in the opening uh, remark dr gupta mentioned that what was covered in this uh, area uh, of teaching at uh, this particular program and he said qualitative and quantitative but i think qualitative research is not being emphasized because i assume that the participants are from commerce management accounting finance and other subjects like human resource management maybe uh, a strategy also so you may be from all of or areas some mba institutions some commerce so you may be a mix of these kinds of participants that's my assumption now in in that when we were talking about practical uh, implications now in practice a lot of these qualitative research is used you can take marketing for example now in marketing the ground grounded theory is being used at your phenomenology is being used now perhaps uh, you must have been exposed but go into depth of this methodology because it's not necessary that if you are not strong in quantitative techniques then you should at least focus on qualitative but master those art of doing research one of your uh, participants uh, who gave uh, feedback for example she was from history background and she was talking about that even the basic mean mode you don't need that actually what you need is the qualitative research in history what kind of research is being done ethnography is used narratives are used for example archaeology of course the field studies are being done so different subjects require different kinds of methodology when we talk about finance in particular and then accounting and economics i think there is maximum use of the quantitative techniques and if you really want to do a good research you have to master applied econometrics not just the statistics now the most used and misused technique in research has been, that has been multiple uh, this uh, multiple may request shweta ji please Right. Thank you, sir. I'll just mute it. Thank you, sir. Right. Sorry for mm -hmm. interruption, sir. No problem. Uh, well, I'm going on and on. You stop me. No, sir. Thank you, sir. So, multiple regression is the most used and misused method. Why? Because it's done mechanically. SPSS, for example, is such a big book, and if you read that chapter on multiple regression very carefully, people don't do the diagnostics. Very simple, one or two. You have uh, four classical assumptions, and you have several conditions. your data itself of course uh, again dr gupta mentioned that how do we look at data 
first you have to look at data you see you have to understand is this a good data what are the problems with that data unless and that itself takes time to understand actually okay so when these uh, great teachers are teaching you they are just giving you the basics after that if you don't spend time on these techniques it will not work you will do it mechanically you will simply use one of the software for example if you have learned spss of course is the basic nowadays it's used to teach statistics in colleges good colleges you see of course you are when you we have in a setup like university and when you have aicte well uh, the the flexibility the flexibility of the teachers has been taken away good teachers at least you see and therefore you can't use them statistics has to be taught board and chalk and that's it fine and that too also very simple sums you do but spss is the basic for undergraduate for researchers you have to use higher level essay essay as for example sas as we call it you can use a stata for example you have uh, of course you use is there but the people are misusing again the software in fact unless you understand your data and unless you don't use a technique to fit the data okay so uh, i think these are the problems uh, which uh, i have been seeing and i was saying that why only data why not the, the, the you have two kinds of data available one is numbers another is textual data Why, why not interviews extensive interviews you see the theory is in in management particularly in areas like hrm marketing and strategy they have used the political case research not the case method the case teaching is different from case research and if you do case research but then you have to be trained in that you see so actually there is a lot of and don't try to if everyone because quantitative data has to be analyzed if you don't know these techniques so well i'm not saying that you have to be expert in econometrics but applied econometrics you have to understand not how to derive them but whatever has been given how to understand what what does it mean where does it apply for example so these are some of the thoughts uh, which i thought i will share with you i am really happy that these kinds of programs are done what i am saying is that the participants need to put much more efforts than what is being taught and if they don't practice it will not work i also last point which i would like to mention that what dr s p agarwal was saying if you really want that research has to be of practical use please get industry people to do research and ask them to select those topics which are useful for the industry the problem the dilemma of the academicians is that the research which they do is read only by researchers you see they understand when i was saying use high level of econometrics very few people understand so it is serving academics because people are coming with sometimes new paradigm which is not so common of course and uh, but they learn uh, they learn they enrich themselves which would be coming into their teaching but for practical uh, utility some researchers uh, did that are still doing it but i think get more people from industry and don't ask them to choose theoretical topics they have to have practical topics thank you very much once again thank you very much for Not inviting me and uh, dr gupta you are there you have been always coaxing me but of course i say even if anjali writes to me i will accept ready yeah okay we are ready to you <laughs> thank you so much sir thank you so much thank you thank you sir thank you so much professor pande it's always a treat to listen to you sir and he's like a fresh new student despite having super annuated i had the same kind of surge of happiness listening to you as though i was also like a first year student today your deliverance is as always lucid you give us very clear ideas of what has to be done and what should be done and i do hope that the students who are here the researchers who are listening to you have benefited and are going to take it forward from here thank you so much thank sir you, thank we are indebted I, to you for being with us thank you i would like to see soral actually where is he i want to see him. i would see him after many many years <laughs> uh, sir uh, soral sir please unmute sir uh, we have uh, uh-huh. our guest of honor professor g soral coordinator 
National Accounting Talent Search. Professor Head Dean, faculty, who is also the chairman of University College of Commerce, Mohan Lal Sukhadia University, Udaipur, Rajasthan. Professor Soril has many books to his credit, has many papers to his credit, and has also guided PhD students and has contributed immensely to the research and teaching. We are extremely fortunate to have you, sir, with us. And I now leave the floor open to you for your address. Professor G. Sorrel, sir. Sir, request you to please unmute, sir. Sorrel, sir. Hello. Thank you, Am sir. I audible thank now? You. Yes, yes, sir. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, thank you very much, madam, and the organizers for inviting me here in this uh, uh, valedictory function of the two weeks refresher course organized by the Ramanujan College and the NCR branch of Indian Accounting Association. Uh, all the dignitaries present here, I would begin with the, uh, paying my regards to my respected teacher, Professor I am Pandesav, uh, who taught me about some 37 years before. Uh, so I am so glad that uh, the organizers didn't give me only opportunity to talk to you, but to listen to my professor. And uh, as as have been commented upon, professor was mentioning in between that I am going on on and on. I I wish that he should have gone continuously like that. And sir, listening to you after such a long time, very valuable words. And uh, uh, I mean I have no words to thank you for that personally from my thank so thank nice. You, uh, Professor K. K. Agrawal sahab, who's uh, also uh, made us quite rich after his great deliberations. Uh, we have Dr. J. L. Gupta ji, who is an elder brother for me also personally. And as has been said about him, I mean, the uh, despite of his physical age, whatever, the most young person and the energetic person. I mean, yeah. we know his patronage to all these things that we, we have been facing. Uh, Dr. S. P. Agrawal sahab, uh, Professor S. P. Agrawal sahab, the principal of Ramanujan College. I have been listening to him also earlier and I have seen his initiatives from the college behalf as he was mentioning that qualities he have been ensuring all the time and all those nice, nice things are there. But I mean, the, the role of Dr. J.L. Gupta cannot be undermined. I know that he is recognizing not only, uh, I mean, uh, one, one facet of the whole affair, but many affairs. He is patronizing NCR Delhi chapter of Indian Accounting Association. Uh, which is a comparatively new chapter of our association. And uh, that way, I mean, everywhere, wherever he is going, I mean, uh, he is a source of inspiration for all of us. Uh, 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 we, we have uh, uh, CA Dr. Sanjeev Singhal, uh, who is a very learned uh, chartered accountant. And uh, I would uh, name him by saying, he's, despite of his seniority in practice and everything, he's chairperson of the NCR IAA branch. And... Uh, a very learned and academic bent of chartered accountant, you can witness it. Uh, he is the chairperson of uh, the branch, and we all know that how uh, the NCR branch has been doing leaps and bounds to achieve the objectives of the association. Dr. Rekha Dayalji has been very aptly uh, conducting everything. Professor Anjali Ji, uh, all uh, respected persons whom I might not have named uh, available on the dais, dear participants, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we we have been listening to very learned uh, speeches so far, and uh, uh, I don't know. I mean, from where to begin and where uh, whatever time of ten minutes have been allotted to me, what to comment on? Uh, I of course would like to uh, share some of my thoughts here. Uh, as have, was mentioned in my uh, introduction, I had around four decades of teaching experience uh, in various universities in the country. Uh, after my uh, qualifications, out of which one year I have spent at IIM Ahmedabad, uh, where I had the great opportunity of being taught, and not only being taught, but at that time uh, when we had that faculty development program, Professor Pandey used to be my direct guide in uh, the research project. So therefore, I have all regards and affection for him all through, and he has been guiding me off and on whenever uh, I used to con contact him all. Through. So, dear friends, with all this little that I had in my kitty regarding my some experience, it was mentioned that I have guided PhDs also. Yes, I have superannuated from my job, but in our uh, university, whatever number of PhDs were continuing with you at the time of superannuation, they continue till they complete. Uh, 
Uh, though, of course, you are not allotted new candidates. At the moment, I have seven candidates actively working for their PhDs under my supervision. So as Professor Pandey was mentioning in his uh, uh, very apt remarks at various places, he said that he's, uh, he don't, don't know what exactly is happening with the current candidates and the, what's the trend uh, of guiding. He's much senior to us. Uh, I may share some of my experiences with you all today. First, I would like to definitely agree with you as uh, that over the span of these uh, four or five decades, which I've seen in my life as a student and there, thereafter as teachers at various stages, bent towards research, bent towards methodological research has risen like anything. Uh, Professor Gupta in particular would agree with me and those who are of my con uh, contemporary time would agree with me. Professor Pandey was also hinting at in between when he said that it, in his times, cards were being punched and a lot of time in data collection and everything. Those days, you know, the teachers, though they were required to research, do researches, PhDs were not compulsory. When I joined the profession, PhDs were not compulsory. I joined as a fresh postgraduate just based on my merit life. And later on, when I did my PhD, it was not out of any pressure or requirement or promotion. Later on, it started, which all of you may be so those were different days and uh, requirements regarding learning of research methodology, doing of PhDs in a methodological way, all these things were not that common as they are now. We all know the journey that uh, initially UG Spirit, uh, uh, you know, incentive based in 1986 when they offered increments for doing PhD and then the journey started. We know at the moment that API has come, you have to publish, a lot of pressure is there. My, my dear participants who are there in good number listening to me, they know that they have a pressure of publication. I consider it as a good development in our system. But uh, the type of efforts which uh, Professor Agrawal, Dr. Gupta, Rekha Dayalji, all of you, the chapter are doing in uh, making you know tireless efforts in training the young teachers regarding methodological aspects, right, is priceless. We, uh, what has been said by some of my predecessors also. You see, still we need, uh, I think Professor uh, Agrawal mentioned that, still we need a lot of uh, dissemination of knowledge, systematic preparation uh, of uh, uh, you know, research projects and research methodological tools, particularly to our teachers. So that's the exact uh, point where uh, the uh, nail is being hit by few people in the college and the LCR chapter. Very much required. All these things are coming up about the softwares Professor Pandey was mentioning. Yes, now we have SPSS, of course, but even uh, MS Excel, which is a tool in our own mobile phones available at the moment, is improving day by day and various analytical tools, even MS Excel is providing free of charge now, which are extremely useful for researchers. PowerPoint presentations, I mean, uh, which, which are required for dissemination of knowledge and extension of knowledge when we do research are also be, uh, you know, getting updated. And a lot of artificial intelligence tools have entered even, even MS Excel now. So software development is uh, unprecedented. And now about uh, artificial intelligence, all of you know. The, the facility with chat GPT is doing what other the, uh, the artificial intelligence text generators are providing us. All that is there before us. But uh, dear friends, I would like to put a word of caution. All these things have been discussed. Uh, I would like to put a word of caution very humbly from my side, from my own experience and my own feelings, uh, which also have been touched upon here and there uh, by my predecessors, that there is an obsession of doing data analysis in the researches to a great extent at the moment here. By obsession, I mean that, you know, once you have the SPSS, about Proves database, Professor Pandey was mentioning, okay, in finance and accounting, which is our subject, it is easy. You sit on the uh, system, switch it on quickly within 5, 10, 15 minutes maximum. You have all data. You name how many companies you want. You name how many years data you want. And quickly you can pass them on to SPSS, to MOS, to eViews, to NVivo. All softwares are readily available in your system. And in the another press of button, you get results. Now, I'm also an old PhD examiner, so uh, particularly with regards to all in the system, sharing my experience with you here. Very pertinent, which is you know, close to my heart to share here. 
what's happening is with because of this ease of data collection and implementation of these softwares obsession has come up one small example i think would be appropriate particularly for the participants because they have been taught all these things during uh, this refresh course that nowadays having descriptive statistics which in our days when computers used not to uh, be there uh, my contemporaries know how difficult it used to be to come up with even descriptive statistics of a series nowadays it is a click of button <laughs> you forget about everything and it is giving you complete description in of, of the series in just a second click of button and it's almost free of charge you know without burdening you in any way now what's happening because of that this and there are many other examples which perhaps i cannot quote because of positive time now what's happening which i have been noticing uh, being examiner of you know several universities etc that because of this obsession uh, permit me to use these words uh, dr gupta that students have have a tendency of using the data and the analysis and the software processes as within quotes ornaments to their research work right gehne pehnane jaisi koshish wo log karte hain i know several of these students who have come across me and said sir i couldn't do any technical analysis can you please guide me because otherwise it will not look nice they do not know much about all those things but just picking up here and there and i am very sorry to say that much of it is now outsourced perhaps there is no harm in mentioning it this is a fact of the time much of it is outsourced you pay some money few bucks get all analysis done what data professor pandey was mentioning have you looked at the quality of data does it satisfy as he said the basic uh, requirements of regression did you ensure that no but because somebody for few uh, bucks some pretenses have processed that you find it an ornament for your research work you put it over there without any interpretation right so this obsession is a problem which has to be taken care of dear participants that i would like to underline here quite quite a lot in addition when you have put suppose the right kind of analysis let us suppose that you have done it first condition is that please ensure this is the right type of data please ensure this is the right type of tool that you are employing please ensure this is the right type of software you are using these three are inevitable steps for looking into just learning certain things which learned teachers have given you through this refresh course putting them here and there would only waste your time would make you losing your reputation and maybe some somebody like professor pandey come across you examines you what happens you know about it you are all teachers mostly or would be teachers for that matter further to that if all these things are right i would also like to point out that please look into the extent of interpretation that you do unfortunately what's happening is that uh, let us let us suppose everything has been right data were good software was good tools were fine how about the der derivation of meaning professor s s p agarwal sir was mentioning pragmatic research very important could you come out with some pragmatic conclusion for the good of the society or for the researchers i have seen large number of cases every every now and then even these days i am seeing where lot of uh, data is there in a research project or an article or a thesis with a interpretation of half a page hardly touching any anything coming out of it sir hardly so dear friends i don't have much time let me conclude by saying that all these precious learnings that this program has given to you kindly wash them kindly go through them brush up your uh, existing knowledge about them use them as much as you can go for data analysis if you are not uh, going uh, going for it earlier as one of the participant was mentioning uh, in in her feedback that uh, now she will be she said that very humbly she said uh, uh, that you know uh, that she was outdated and now she could learn very good use them put them to use yes but all <laughs> these precautions which i have put before you are very very important and i hope and pray for all the participants here that with this in, uh, you know intervention from this ramanujan college and ncr ia chapter your research is would scale heights both in terms of quantity and quality i once again thank the organizers for giving me this great opportunity thank you very much thank, thank you so professor soran for your scintillating performance
Thank you so much, Professor Very Solitza. Useful talk. I think you have really given us a very deep insight into what kind of a research that should take up, should be taken up. And of course, there is a change that you have pointed out from what it used to be and what it is now and the dissemination of knowledge which should be there. We do hope that the students, the, no, the researchers who are here with us take note of these ideas that are coming up from the experts and make use of them in their own fields and in their own researches. Thank you so much for being with us and sparing your time with us. Now we have our very own CA Dr. Sanjeev Singhal, who is the Central Council member, ICAI. He's the Chairman, Sustainable Reporting Standard Board. He's an FCA with more than 20 years of experience. Having done his PhD in International Finance from Faculty of Management Studies, Delhi University, he went ahead to become almost an expert in IFRS. He has a large number of books which have been published from leading publishers to his credit and has addressed more than 650 seminars on various topics. There is so much that I can speak about CA Dr. Sanjeev Singhal, but I know that you all are waiting to listen to him. So I would request our president of the Indian Accounting Association, CA Dr. Sanjeev Singhal, to please go ahead with his address. Dr. CA, Sanjeev, CA Dr. Sanjeev Singhal. Anjali, can you just see? Hello. Sir, up and root cut fine. Are you come on, Luana? And root cut out. Equipment, Mr. Kadu, man. Yeah. Thank you. So I was not able to unmute myself. And you know, probably because uh, such a nice deliberation by Dr. I. M. Pandey and Professor G. Soral was going on. And you know, I wanted to uh, request Dr. Sir, Rekha just there. a minute, sir. It's done. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Uh, what I'm saying is I wanted to request Dr. Rekha Dayal not to give introduction in, all, in the interest of time. <laughs> uh, but uh, you know, these luminaries are there. Uh, led by Dr. I. M. Pandey, you know, I consider myself as his student, though directly not, but since he was a professor at Delhi University, so I consider myself a student and academician par excellence, and I was a member uh, of NACAS along with uh, him, and I've seen his deliberations over there, and of course, Professor G. Soril is there, uh, and Dr. S. P. Agarwal, he's the force behind this program. Uh, you know, his energy, uh, I think he has, he has done thousands and thousands of interviews for faculty in the last uh, <laughs> few weeks. So it is only he who can do this right from morning till night. And then ended up recruiting a very good faculty at his college. So heads off to him who is building this college, who has built this college and now building the, uh, the faculty, which will go on for another three to four decades. Uh, with the college and um, of course Dr. J.L. Gupta, the person who is most agile, most active, uh, due to which this chapter is flourishing. You know, all of us are, uh, all of us come to give introduction speech and validatory speech, but it is he who keeps it going uh, and along with the very able support of uh, Dr. Rekha Dayal and Dr. Anjali Gupta who work behind the scenes, so do all the hard work and the credit goes to us. You know, the presidents, particularly in the Indian system, are, are actually ceremonial. Uh, and, you know, it is the, it is the general secretaries and uh, other people who work at the ground. But, uh, friends, it is indeed a pleasure to be uh, here once again. And last time, uh, you know, when I was addressing uh, all of you in the introductory session, so after that, you know, I gained knowledge about generative AI. And uh, let me tell you what Professor G. Sorel was talking about, that today the analysis is not difficult at all. You collect the data, put the data in software, whether it's SPSS or eViews, you get the result in fractions of minutes, if not seconds. But after that, what? 
after that we used to do the analysis if you compare this by this then this is the answer so hence we are saying this but gone are the days i think this can be done by excel also now and now time has uh, moved time is for generative ai now what is generative ai i give you an example uh, suppose a practitioner received an income tax notice for his client and in his database which is again available in soft copy there are 1 lakh cases of income tax uh, which are from lower court from high court and from supreme court now the software has the capability to do the keyword search the generative ai has the capability to do the keyword search and see which case is the highest in the ranking for example the case of supreme court and in supreme court also it can it can distinguish between a single bench a double bench constitutional bench etc so it can order uh, it can make a priority order a packing order and after that see that these facts are similar to these 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 cases the generative ai can also make a submission it can also make a prayer to the court and it can also book a time in your calendar to discuss that meeting now research has to go beyond this you know a uh, uh, half of it can be done by chat gpt and what i mentioned is being done by generative ai and that is there it's already there so it's not something which will come in future google is having artificial intelligence if you write a mail google suggest what should be a response and google says in few years time it will be able to write an entire response to the mail that you have received it also reminds you that this mail was received 5 days ago would you like to respond so the research has to go beyond this beyond uh, uh, beyond finding the correlation or the standard deviation or the regression analysis or the t test no it has to go beyond this it has to go beyond comparison it has to the application of mind you have to beat the computer in doing the research and you know all this work which used to take months and years together can now be done in weeks and days now what after that so do we really need 3 years for research 3 uh, years for phd probably one need to sincerely think that do we need only one year for doing phd because all these tools are available collection of data the, the google doc has made it so simple that you know you get all data compiled at one place so in you know, a probably within 6 months or 3 months time you can do a much more qualitative research and that's what india needs in various topics whether it is finance whether it is management whether it is arts or sciences or it is sustainability any topic the research has to be much deeper research has to be contemporary and and you know it should not be run of the mill kind of a research so when you write a paper uh, are you able to present new facts to the light or a new interpretation that is what is required uh, so you know if all all of you as the fellow uh, faculty members uh, can really undertake one quality research in one year two year three year time and bring to light uh, new ideas new concepts then this is what will make a meaningful contribution to the academia and when and maybe also to the practitioner because ultimately the research is used by the practitioners also so that's my request to all of you and as dr rika they all mentioned in the introductory session there is no dearth of funds for the research whether it is the professional institutions or the delhi university or the other universities give ample amount of funds for the research like uh, apart from this uh, 10 lakh rupees research grant which we used to give now we also started a put this one is for chartered accountant a 75000 rupees per month research grant for chartered accountants uh, so which is a substantial amount 75000 per month uh, and and i'm saying that that there is no dearth of research the iims have the chair professors and and everybody gives money for research so but please engage in quality research uh, research for the sake of research will be a waste of resources and i'm sure that all of you uh, you know will rise to the occasion and contribute to the cause of the nation thank you thank you so much uh, see you dr sanjeev singhal i think you really hit the pot at the right spot by bringing in the generative artificial intelligence and which is the need of the hour and i do hope that the quality of research is actually focused upon and uh, i've been mentioning all through that there is as you have rightly uh, again uh, 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 spoke about the funds availability so i think it is time for the researchers to really come up and bring out their new concepts and new ideas so that 
the nation it strives for will. Thank you so much for sharing your views with us. Now it's time for me to call our very sweet, ever smiling lady, Professor Anjali Gupta, to propose a vote of thanks. And I always feel and take upon myself a duty that she gives a thank you speech for everybody. So I think it is imperative and important that she be thanked first. Professor Anjali Gupta, despite a very hectic schedule that she has from her college where she teaches, Atmaram Sanatan Dharam, University of Delhi, a family that she looks after, her research work, her PhD students, yet when it comes to planning and organizing these programs, she's always at the forefront. And each one of us, she's our go-to person and very smilingly, she covers up for everybody's mistakes. Her very benign countenance takes up whatever is being literally given to her. She accepts always graciously, very politely, very humbly, the tasks which have been assigned to her and does them meticulously. Our great thanks, I would say, we are indebted to you, Anjali, for not only giving your time, but also making sure that everything is glitch-free and goes on smoothly. Over to you. Thank you so much, ma'am, for such nice words. Like, you just pick up new words for me every time. I'm so grateful to you, ma'am. A very good... <laughs> Thank you so much. A very good evening to all. Respected Professor K.K. Adarwal, sir. Respected Professor I.M. Pandey, sir. Professor G. Soral, sir. C.A. Dr. Sanjeev Singhal, sir. Our dear Professor S.P. Adarwal, sir. Dr. J.L. Gupta, sir. Our very lovely Dr. Rekha Dayal, ma'am. My fellow team members and dear participants. I'm profusely elated to have this opportunity to present a vote of thanks. I, Professor Anjali Gupta, on behalf of Teaching Learning Center Ramanujan College, under the Pandit Madan Mohan Marviya National Mission on Teachers and Teaching, Ministry of Education, Indian Accounting Association, NCR Chapter, and on my own behalf, propose a heartiest vote of thanks in this validatory session of two weeks national refresher course on research methodology and data analysis. First, I'm honored to thank Professor K.K. Agarwal, sir, for gracing the occasion. Sir always finds some uh, time for us from his very, very busy schedule. Mm -hmm. Sir, it's a delight to always listen to your dialect, and we just take away every time some new thing. The data collected due to data science, along with use of artificial intelligence, ensures the data so collected is analyzed. That is what was suggested by sir. The same will be useful as well as will help in better uh, decision making. Sir also stressed that data science, which is explored till this point of time, is just tip of the iceberg and there's a lot more to be explored. There should be a limit to the generation of data as well as holistic analysis must be undertaken to ensure power sa saving. Power consciousness and bandwidth judicious use was stressed upon by sir. Thank you, sir, so much for just bringing this aspect on this platform and share it with us. I'm privileged to express my gratitude to Professor I.M. Pandey, sir, who is our godfather. All the students of, our fin of finance really look upon to him, sir, for his dialect and addresses. Sir has stressed on the innovative innovation required in teaching methods to ensure that it now interests the students. The approach of research must be changed to ensure quality of research and the same must be improved. Sir, thank you for taking us through the journey of teaching and research over the years, how it has evolved as well as developed, not just in Delhi University, but other universities also. Sir, uh, sir has just uh, mentioned that quality research and publications in seminal papers not always ensure that there is a strong background of uh, knowledge and applied econometrics must be understood in a proper way for the purpose of research. It is my pleasure to thank Professor G. Soral, sir, who has endowed us with his words of wisdom and experience. 
Pressure of publications for teachers definitely is a positive development as stressed by sir. But the data analysis tools which are widely available must be judiciously used, keeping in mind the objective of our research. That was suggested by sir and thank you so much sir for bringing this aspect before on this platform. With equal pressure, I, uh, pleasure, I express my heartfelt appreciation for CA Dr. Sanjeev Singhal sir for his enlightening speech. Generative artificial intelligence, its concept as well as its application was discussed by sir in his dialect. Research according to sir must go beyond data and must be of quality that it beats the computer. New facts and interpretation is the need of the day according to sir. Thank you so much, sir. It gives us immense joy and satisfaction to express our gratefulness to Principal Sir Professor S.P. Agarwal Sir, whose dynamic leadership has made Ramanujan, achieve, Ramanujan College achieve new heights. Every endeavor of ours is carried out under his constant guidance and support. Sir highlighted the achievement and contributions of TLC Ramanujan College to the enhancement of skills of teaching fraternity. Research must be to, uh, undertaken to solve problems of the society and not just publication was suggested by sir. Out of box thinking is must for innovation. That is what sir stressed in his dialect. My heart feels with joy when I express my thankfulness to Dr. J.L. Gupta sir. Every initiative of Indian Accounting Association NCR chapter vibrates and echoes with his prominence. Sir has in a very crisp manner summarized the proceedings of the refresher course. We are always honored by your respected presence and mentorship, sir. And we are thankful, sir, that you are always there for us. I am always delighted to thank our guide, Dr. Rekha Dayal, ma'am, who has created a distinct importance for herself in our lives. Whether we are members of Indian Accounting Association, NCR chapter, or as teachers, she has a smiling personality, always ready to help us in any new effort of ours. And she's the one we can always go to with any problem and she has a solution. So it is the other way around. Thank you so much, ma'am, for being there for us. Now I would like to offer my gratitude to Dr. Rajiv Nayan, and Mr. Akhil from Ramanujan College, Ms. Saloni Aroda from Jesus and Mary College for their continuous support. My heartfelt appreciation for Mr. Prashant, Mr. Sanchit, and Mr. Ravinder Bisht from TLC Ramanujan College for their 24 by 7 assistance. At last, a very special feeling of gratitude for all our participants who have bestowed on us their support by being a part of the course. Thank you so much once again to all the dignitaries for being a part of this validatory session. With this, we come to the end of the session. Thank you so much, sir, everybody, sir. Thank you, Andy. Thank you. So Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, just one announcement before I am just closing this, uh, like uh, the final quiz is going to be open after this validity session. I'm just requesting all the participants to please uh, attempt that final quiz and other quizzes will always be kept or will also be kept up open for one day. So requesting all to ensure that the entire uh, assessment process is concluded well in time. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Sir, sir can we just... Uh, Conclude yeah. the meeting. Okay. Yes. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Sir, thank you, ma'am. Thank you, Saloni. Thank you, Saloni. Great job. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Yeah.